Hey everyone, how's it going? About a year and a half ago, I ranked every single perk in all of the Treyarch Zombies games. That was a great video, but one problem with that video is that it was released before Cold War. So that video needs to be updated, which is what this video is. If you haven't seen that original video, I would recommend watching it, but if it's too long for you, let me bring you up to speed. This is the tier list we ended up with at the end of that video, and I'll break it down simply for you. We have seven tiers in this tier list. F tier are for the perks that actively harm the player, D tier are for the perks that are harmless but kind of pointless, C tier are for the perks that are just okay, B tier are for the perks that are situationally good, A tier are for the perks that are good in just about every context, S tier are for the pseudo crutch perks, and double S tier are for the real crutch perks. The perks aren't ranked within the tiers themselves since everything is so situational, especially in that B tier, and we have a handful of perks that show up more than once. There's a different version for quick revive in solo and co-op, and there's a new version of every perk that was featured in Black Ops 4. BO4 handled perks in a very different way than previous games, so they got their own ranking, and Cold War is in a very similar situation. Because there's no perk limit in Cold War, and with the different tiers each perk has, it's kind of hard to compare them to their previous versions. For the purpose of this video, I'm considering the tier 5 upgrade of the perk to be the definitive version of that perk, since it's the one most people are going to be familiar with, and I definitely didn't want to rank 5 different versions of each perk for each tier. So we're going to rank all the tier 5 versions of the 10 perks available in Cold War. We're going to start with the 6 perks we had on launch with the machine and then go through the remaining 4 in chronological order. Starting with Quick Revive, this version of the perk is in my opinion the best version of the perk we've had in the franchise. It's basically the Black Ops 4 version of the perk with the faster health regen combined with the self-medication gobble gum from Black Ops 3. You of course get the faster revive speed in co-op games and the solo version of the perk we saw in Black Ops 1 through 3 was basically turned into a support item you can buy with high grade salvage. Taking the self revive aspect away from quick revive solo version was definitely the right move and one of the things I liked most about Black Ops 4. What Treyarch has tried to do with their last two games was remove crutch perks from the game and as you can see with the last tier list that definitely worked for quick revive. Solo quick revive was in double S tier for Black Ops 1 through 3 but only in A tier for Black Ops 4. And if the upgrade system for Cold War didn't exist this version of quick revive would go straight into A tier again. However the tier 5 upgrade breaks this perk. Adding the self-medication gobblegum into Quick Revive not only reintroduces the very feature they were trying to remove with the Black Ops 4 version, but also adds yet another layer of protection for the player in a game that already does a lot to protect the player. If you're fully set up in Cold War, you have tier 5 Quick Revive, the regular self-revive equipment, Tombstone, which they added into the game with Firebase Z, and only after going down for a fourth consecutive time will your game end. And at the end of the round, you can buy all of these items again and act like it never happened. Also, when you go down with Quick Revive, you're going to have a pistol or the ray gun if you happen to be using that in your game. And remember that the ray gun in Cold War is the best ray gun in the entire franchise, so you can easily revive yourself with one or two shots on literally any round. Like I said, this is easily the best version of the perk in the entire franchise. Quite frankly, it is extremely overpowered. There's a strong argument that this is the most overpowered perk in the entire franchise, so needless to say, Cold War's Quick Revive is going to straight into double S tier. The next perk we have is Jug, and let's not waste any time here by putting it straight into double S tier. There's really not much to even say with this one. Jug is back in Cold War, and it's basically exactly as we left it, so of course it's going into double S tier. One thing I will say about this version of the perk is that there's at least potential for it to not be a crutch perk. With the introduction of things like armor, there's a possibility for Jug to not be a crutch perk in the future, but armor wasn't introduced in a Cold War to replace Jug. It was mostly meant to replace the zombie shield and help do away with buildables, but I wouldn't be surprised to see others argue that Cold War's Jug should be an S tier. I can't see it being any lower than that, but I thought I would at least point it out. Up next we have Speed Cola. Speed Cola had some very interesting changes made to it in Cold War. The original Speed Cola we saw in World at War all the way through Black Ops 3 decreased reload times by 50%. In Cold War, the fully upgraded version only does 30%, and the base version of the perk only does half of that. So very clearly a downgrade, however to compensate they added some features reminiscent of Time Slip from Black Ops 4, as well as some abilities that generally make you play faster. You can swap weapons faster, fire and reload while sprinting, the mystery box will settle faster, and bear 
barriers can be repaired faster, which are all nice features, but pretty small improvements overall. The big one that balances out these slower reload times is a 20% faster recharge for all field upgrades, which is huge. A lot of high round strategies rely on constantly using Ring of Fire, and getting Aether Shroud to kill early could be the difference between life and death. So with all of that in consideration, I'm putting Speed Cola back into S tier. Yeah, you're not reloading as fast, but the faster recharge on those field upgrades more than makes up for it. Up next, we have my favorite perk, Stamina Up. And not unlike Jug, there wasn't a lot of change with this one. Even with the upgrades, basically everything works to make the player faster in some way. Interestingly, they removed fall damage with the fourth tier. I guess they weren't planning on adding PhD into the game at some point. Anyways, Stamina Up is going back into S tier, just like Jug is basically identical to its previous versions, which as a Stamina Up lover, I'm all here for. Deadshot Daiquiri. This one is interesting. The original was in C, and BO4 got bumped up to B, and I think Cold War's version is the best Deadshot we've seen for two reasons. The first is that the point system rewards you for fast kills more than previous games, but BO4 was the same way. You also don't have a perk limit getting in your way with Cold War. Deadshot was always a great fifth or sixth perk in previous games, so you couldn't take advantage of it in most games, and that's not an issue in Cold War. The weapon sandbox also happens to really work for a perk like Deadshot. Most of the best weapons in the game are designed to work around headshots, at least in some capacity. The only weapons that don't benefit much from Deadshot are the Die Wonder weapons, the Ray Gun, and all the various melee weapons. But Deadshot does even more than just headshots in this game. As the rounds get higher, zombies will start to wear armor to protect themselves, and Deadshot can penetrate that armor relatively easily. So unless you're using a weapon like the Ray Gun, that can kill zombies very effectively regardless of their armor, then this is going to be a necessary perk for getting through rounds quickly past round 25 or 30. However, the reason Deadshot shines brightest in this game is the speed of the game. The zombies in Cold War are extremely fast, especially once you get to the high rounds. One of the biggest negatives about Deadshot was in prior games you could always just aim for the head yourself, but in Cold War you don't have nearly as much time as you did in a game like Black Ops 1 or 3. So with the extremely fast pace, the addition of armored zombies, the weapon sandbox, and the lack of perk limit, Deadshot is really good in Cold War. This may be controversial, but I'm putting Deadshot into S tier. It's extremely useful in the early game, mid game, and for high rounds. It's viable in every strategy with just about every weapon, but you can play without it if you need to, which keeps it out of double S tier. The last of the original six perks Cold War had at launch, and technically the only new perk we saw introduced in the Cold War, we have Elemental Pop. This perk is pretty strange. At tier 5, it basically turns into Electric Cherry, and every other tier before that is designed around improving your alternate ammo types. So because it has the Electric Cherry effect, I can't put it any lower than B tier. The only context Elemental Pop is bad in is when you're trying to hold a zombie at the end of a round, and your AAT accidentally kills it. Other than that, it makes all of your weapons a bit better, including Wonder Weapons that normally can't have an AAT, and you have Electric Cherry with it. Combine that with the added buffs to alternate ammo types, I think Elemental pop goes into A tier. If the AATs in Cold War were as good as they were in Black Ops 3, there might be an argument for S tier, but they're not, so is A tier. Kind of a boring perk when you think about it, but they made up for it by having a fantastic perk machine in Jingle. So as you can see, Cold War started with a ton of great perks. And then Firebase Z came out. Yeah, Tombstone is still pretty terrible, huh? I mean, I don't want to make fun because they tried to make this perk better. In fact, I would say they did make this perk better. It's basically Tombstone, Who's Who, and the Coagulant Gobblegum from Black Ops 3 all stitched together. And I've got to say it's easily better than all of them but it's not perfect. The biggest drawback for this one is that, just like Who's Who in Solo, if you die in your shadow state, the game is over. However, it is way easier to revive yourself in Solo in Cold War since you have more than just an M1911. You also get the choice to go into your shadow state instead of just being thrown to the wolves, which is nice. In co-op, you have a way better chance of being revived by either yourself or a teammate when you have this perk, and in Solo, you have the chance to revive yourself with Tombstone and keep some of your perks, or you can use quicker revive as a self-revive to get back on your feet. But speaking of quick revive, that's kind of the issue, isn't it? Why would you get Tombstone when quick revive does the same thing and a little more, and self-revives don't have any risk reward associated with them? And since it's a perk I have to ask the purpose 
of it's going into D tier. I think there's an argument that it can creep into C tier with some of the improvements, and if you exclusively play co-op games, C tier is probably a better reflection anyway, especially if you don't happen to have tier 5 quick revive unlocked, but realistically, for the way I play especially, it's a D tier perk. The next perk they introduced with the Outbreak map? Game mode? I'm still not entirely sure what to call it. Mule Kick. They added Mule Kick. And it's not much different from the Black Ops 4 version, to be honest. The only major change between the two versions is there's a 25% chance to keep equipment like monkey bombs or grenades after throwing them, which can definitely be a game changer, but not worth buying the perk for, especially if you can't juggle a third weapon. A lot of the game's mechanics also make Mule Kick way less necessary. Mule Kick was introduced into Black Ops 1 because ammo was a massive issue in that game, but since you can buy ammo in Cold War for any weapon at any time, there's not a real need that Mule Kick is fulfilling. The only time ammo might be an issue is in a game mode like Outbreak. So hey, at least they got the timing right. Yeah, Mule Kick is going to go straight into B tier again. I'm glad it's in the game. It's not necessary for every game, but it's super useful to have when you do need it. Death Perception in Cold War might be the most underrated perk of all time. It basically does a little bit of everything. You can see loot chests through walls, which can help an Outbreak. You can get a better idea of where zombies are with a faster minimap sweep and an indicator when zombies walk up behind you. It's a nice visual aid without looking terrible like the original, but the real point is a 20% boost in salvage, as well as a 25% increase in armor penetration, which is super useful in the late game when zombies all have some kind of armor. This is one I get early in my game. I can play without it, but it's more annoying to play without it. Shockingly, Death Perception is going into S tier. Last but not least, we have PhD, which is going straight into B tier. I feel like we're ending this on a pretty boring perk. For as great as PhD can be, it basically hasn't changed since 2011. I mean, the increased slide distance is cool. It helps you get around the map a little faster, but that's basically the only change. Really, this should have been part of stamina up and the immunity to fall damage should have been part of PhD like it's always been. PhD is basically exactly the same as it's been for the past decade. If you're using an explosive weapon, PhD is great. If not, then it's not really all that helpful. Let's go ahead and reorganize this so everything is all together. And that's my updated ranking for all of the perks in Treyarch Zombies games. One quick note I want to say before ending this video is why I haven't included anything from Vanguard Zombies or any of the non-Treyarch titles. As far as the non-Treyarch titles go, I haven't played through them yet, though I'm going to start doing that really, really soon, and you'll be seeing that on a channel in the near future if all goes according to plan. But as far as Vanguard goes, it's really hard to judge them accurately since none of Vanguard's content is round-based, and the perk system is, again, entirely different. Vanguard is also still going through its life cycle, so I'm sure new perks will be added in at some point. Although if DLC 1 came and went and there weren't any new perks there, and it doesn't look like Season 2 is going to have anything, so that might not be the case. Maybe we'll update this again in a year with everything from Vanguard and the non track titles, but I think they might be deserving of their own tier list since I don't think you can really compare them. That's just my initial impression going in, but... We'll see. Well, those are just my thoughts. Of course, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you made it this far. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.